with us. We're over 350 people now, which is quite remarkable. So I am going to hand over now, without any further ado, to Katrina Robertson, the warden on the Abbey Centre. Well, thank you, Ruth. Um, thank you very much. And it's great to be joining you from, from Iona. And I think we have some of our resident group joining with us as well, which is fantastic. Ruth, everybody is so happy and hopeful um, that you have been elected leader. And I know the times are really hard, really difficult, but there are such opportunities and so much that we can do together. And we're all, all the associates, associate members of the community are really looking forward to working with you. Um, well, welcome everybody to this service of commitment for the associate members of the Iona community on St Columba's Day, 9th of June. And it's just fantastic to come together, as Ruth said, from so many different places. And I mean, three months ago, I don't know about you, but three months ago, I'd never even heard of Zoom. And here we all are. It's fantastic. So thank you everybody for making the time and being part of this. Our service today is about 30 minutes and it, we will start with some responses and as Ruth said, the, the words that we would invite you to join in with will be on the screen. Then we'll sing, then we have some readings and some reflection, then some prayers, then some more singing and an act of commitment, which is, as Ruth said, that's the time when you press, for associate members, press the, the, un, the unmute button. So we all say that together. And then we'll finish with a, a final song. And we've got a great team of people leading the service today. Ruth, who you've already met, myself, Anne McClintock, who's a translator who is in Maine in the United States. Meg Rowe, who is an artist from London. Martin Rowe, who is a journalist and a poet, also from London. And Giles Semper, who works with local communities making things a lot better at a local level and with businesses. Jenny Barr, who represents associate members on the Iron Communities Council. And we have also Aileen mcdonald Hark, who's taking care of all the techie stuff behind the scenes so that things go reasonably smoothly. So I think we should start. I'm just going to check that Anne has got her button unmuted because we are going to start with the opening responses and the words should come up on your screen. And we'll just make sure that everything, there we go. I hope everybody can see that. And you'll see, um, I'll say a line and then this Anne will say a line and that's in bold and in yellow. And you join in with Anne where it says all. So we'll make a start. The world belongs to God. Yeah. 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 And all, and its, all its people. people. How good it and how lovely it is. Mm -hmm. Live together yeah. in, in unity. unity. Love and faith come together. Justice, Justice, Justice and, and peace join hands. hands. If Christ's disciples keep silent, these stones will so I think we're all going to be muted before we hear the recording of our first song. Uyai Mose, which I'm going to unmute myself. A beautiful song from Zimbabwe. Tina Matemari, Uya Mose, Tina Matemari, Uya Mose, Tina Matemari, Uya Mose, Vino.
is a short prayer before our readings. From the fragmented world of our everyday lives, we gather together in search of wholeness. By many cares and preoccupations, by diverse and separate aims, are we separated from one another and divided within ourselves. Yet we know that no branch is utterly severed from the tree of life that sustains us all. We come to our readings. It's a Columbus day, and as you know, Columba was deeply attached to the Psalms, copying them in his cell on Iona and reciting them before dawn on the seashore here. And I can see, I can see the seashore just outside of my window here. And I think I understand Columba's devotion to the Psalms, and I know myself when things get really tough, it's the Psalms that I turn to. People have called to God down the ages. So remembering Columba today, we will listen to Psalm 121, read by Giles, and then to Martin, who's written a lockdown psalm, which is a riffing on Psalm 121, and he will read it with Meg, then we'll hear the original psalm, read again by Jenny. Over to you, Giles. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. I lift up my eyes from this lockdown. Outside, I cover my face. My friends become danger. I become threat. I step aside, hold my breath as you pass. I lift up my eyes, they are wet from my tears. My days slip through these dried out fingers. From where will my help come? To carry me or hold me? Or to just look toward me with faith, hope and love? Is that too much to ask? Is that a prayer? The dawn, the dusk, how they carry us. My help comes inside PPE from those who care and those who heal. And a friend who calls across the way. Can you believe this? How's your day? My help comes from those who sit and listen when I no longer make sense. Who wash me clean and break a broken blessing over me. Who walk beside us when we die. They neither slumber nor sleep. How they carry us. My help. In all this silence. They being held, the holding, this sad joy that cradles all the sorrow, all the loss, all this love in all this life, how this carries us. I hold them all, they hold me. Wherever I go, they go with me. At my going out and my coming in, even when I cannot catch another breath, still they breathe my life that I may breathe easy again. I lift up my eyes and see that love will keep our eyes from this time forth forevermore. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. 
the Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Beautiful readings, thank you. It is such a well-known psalm. I lift my eyes to the hills. And Martin in his lockdown psalm has brought it right into the center of so much that we're going through. And I turn to Ruth. Ruth, from your context as a member of the Iona community living and working in Cumbria in northwest England, when you lift your eyes to the world around you, what do you see? And from my context, as an associate member living and working on Iona, what do, what do I see? When we lift our eyes from the immediate world around us and look up to the hills for signs of a faith renewed and a hope rekindled, here are some of the things that Katrina and I see. I see people anxious about spreading or catching an invisible virus and learning to trust one another in the midst of such fear. And I see people quite desperate and maybe praying for real for the first time in ages and finding unexpectedly a listening presence, understanding, hope. When I lift my eyes, I see people angry, furious even, about mixed messages coming from our civic and public leaders. And I see people learning to vent this anger appropriately sometimes for the first time. I see on my screen, heartbreakingly, I can't breathe, heard once again from a dying black man, George Floyd, in police custody in the USA. And I believe his funeral and burial are taking place right now. And I also see protests across the globe, and people taking a knee against decades and centuries of racism and injustice. When I lift my eyes, I see vulnerable people made more vulnerable through the suspension of safety nets, social and healthcare and safety nets and through the freezing of access to health and social care. I see some people finding refuge in unexpected places. When I lift my eyes, I see a spotlight on home, cramped or expansive, and people finding pleasure in the simple rhythms of living together, along with a determination to get decent housing for everyone. When I lift my eyes, I see a renewed focus on who has choice and freedom and how we use choice and freedom in our world and a gratitude for the freedom we have where it exists and action for more freedom where it is curtailed. When I lift my eyes, I see the hard and unequal impact of the virus on health, on jobs, on young people's hopes for the future and a resetting of values, global solidarity and plans for a radically different new normal. When I lift my eyes, I see communities discovering new ways of being together as families, as colleagues, as friends, as neighbours, as community. And I see faith groups discovering that hospitable hearts and nimble imaginations can host worship as well as any building. Friends, when you lift your eyes to the world around you, where you are today, across the globe, what do you see? We'll hold now a minute or two of stillness for a silent reflection.
When I lift my eyes to the world around me, what do I see? Mark Vernon has written, we can achieve a high degree of deliberate self-forgetfulness. In that moment, we inwardly lift our eyes. We sit more lightly to ourselves. Life stops being about what's bigger and is instead about what's deeper. Drivenness can drop its exhausting purposefulness. Science can be free to reveal once more the vitality of nature. Poetry can show its inner life. The soul can ascend on its wings. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. We move now to our prayers, which will be led by Anne, Giles and Jenny. Let us pray. God of tenderness, from an uncertain world of fragments and hopes, we thirst for the cooling streams of your love and justice. When deep calls to deep in confusion, we put our hope in you. With the eye of a weaver, you have chosen us, such different threads, to be gathered into unity that the world may believe. So may we not serve your purpose unless we are open to each other, not care for each other unless we reflect your love, not dare to love like you unless we are glad to accept the cost and joy of discipleship. As friends and followers of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Spirit of love, under your strong and gentle wings, there is refuge for all who are exploited, harassed, patronised, demeaned and abused. Shield, nurture and restore us to wholeness and integrity in our personal and corporate lives. In your shelter, let us create a safe space to be ourselves, to explore new possibilities, to share friendship and to sustain each other in the struggle for liberation. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. While we hear a recording of Alison Adam sing a Kyrie, a beautiful Kyrie in Urdu, if we wish, we will name to ourselves and to God the people, the places and situations which are, which are close to our hearts today. As we pray, we'll see an image of an icon recently completed by Meg, and Meg will tell us about the icon now. Thank you. Well, the idea for this icon, and I have it here in my studio, um, came a few years ago when I attended a conference on diversity in church. The speaker, Dr. Elizabeth Henry, 
showed a slide of Rublev's Trinity or Hospitality of Abraham and said that as a black woman, when I go into church, even the icons are all white. I thought at the time I could do something about that and paint a different version. And a few weeks later, I was on Iona and I happened one evening to be with Interjit Bogle from Sheffield, Dora from Uganda and Maya from um, Glasgow. And we were sitting around a table one evening in the bar and I asked them if they would be my angels. Um, and as it happens, I, I actually did two other versions of this painting before I managed to finish this, but I've just finished it in lockdown. Um, and I'm hoping that very soon it will be in the Abbey. And there is space at the table here for you. Thank you. So let us pray as we hear Alison sing with the icon before our eyes. Good I as we say together, of the Iona community, which you will see on your screens. O oh God, who gave to your servant Kalamba the gifts of courage, faith, and cheerfulness, and send people out from Iona to carry, to carry the word of your gospel to every, to every creature. And we pray a like spirit to your church, even this at this present time. Further things. in all things, the purpose of community is hidden, this may be revealed to us. New ways unto to touch the lives of all. 
May we converse with each other, each other. Dear, cherish each other, peace. And if it be your holy will, let the place of your abiding place, the sanctuary, the sanctuary, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing again. We'll listen to the recording and join in if you wish. The words will appear. Oh, here they are. The words have appeared on the screen. Christ's is the world in which we move, sung to the tune of a traditional Scots lullaby. Christ is the world in which we move. Christ above all we serve and to love. Christ is the voice which calls us to prayer. And Christ is the one who meets us here. To the lost Christ show.
to the lost Christ shows his face. We come now to our commitment as associate members of the Iona community. On this St Columbus Day, we commit ourselves as associate members of the Iona community. The Iona community's charter says, we long for a just and peaceful world where all life can flourish. Inspired by our faith and loving concern for the world and its people, we pursue justice and peace in and through community. Now, if you brought an image, a word, an object, or something else that represents your hopes as an associate member of the community, now is the time to put it nearby, or light it, or hold it close to you. I brought a bit of clinker and some, some pink seaweed from the shore. So I would ask the associates of the Iona community to unmute themselves because we're about to see some words on the screen. So please join in as we make our commitment followed by an affirmation. And with the time delay, we say the words in bold on the screen. <laughs> say together. In the presence of sisters and brothers, brothers near and far, creator of the gods, 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 and keep us on your way. 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 It's calling. We are going to be muted. We put together the affirmation. So everybody except. So. We will be led in this affirmation by Anne, Jenny, Giles, Meg, and Martin, who will need to unmute themselves. We believe that God is present in the darkness before dawn, in the waiting and uncertainty, where fear and courage join hands, conflict and caring link arms, and the sun rises over barbed wire. We believe in a with us God, who sits down in our midst to share our humanity. We affirm, we affirm a faith that takes us beyond the safe place, into action, into vulnerability, into the streets. Meg, you need to unmute yourself, I think. We commit ourselves to work for change. We put ourselves on the line. There is responsibility. Safely and facing the fully and humiliation on the edge of the end. Those on the edge by the spirit. Use that spirit. Use community of hope. Community of hope.
And will lead us in a blessing. Living God, bless us as together we go out empowered by our longing, strengthened by our solidarity, humbled by our need to love and serve the world. Amen. The closing responses will come up onto the screen. So please join me, join in with Anne with the word, words in bold. This is the day that God has made. We rejoice and add in it. We will not offer to God offering nothing. Go in peace to love and to serve. We will seek peace and to serve. In the name of the Trinity of Love. God, God in the community, holy and one. and one. And we finish with a wonderful song which from South Africa, which you may have sung in the Abbey here in Iona or in your own churches or groups. It's Mayenze Way, Ando Yako. And I'm sure many of you will be familiar. So we will finish by joining in um, as the recording plays. Um, and thank you everyone for being part of this very special service on St. Columba's Day. Thank you to everybody who led the service and I'm so glad some of our resident team here and Iona will be able to join in were able to join in too um, and I think I think the words were around a little bit funny on the on the, on the screen there but we sang heartily I could see all these mouths opening and closing it was just very inspiring so thank you and I'll hand back to Ruth now thank you so much Katrina and the whole team that took part and led, uh, led that service on this Columba Day. The Iona community would be nothing without our associate members and our wider supporter networks. Um, please do remain committed in your own way and in your own place to your own church communities and faith communities. And also we're grateful so much for your commitment to the Iona community. Friends, we're gonna continue our um, time of sharing now in small groups. And we're going to put you into small groups of maybe five or six different people in breakout rooms and we'll do that maybe two or three times and in those groups um, it's important for us just to, for you to have a chance to meet each other and to say hello and um, make sure that you you find out who you each are and where you've where you've come from for this service today so bear with me while i um create the rooms um 
for you all to go into. I just have to do this um, manually. Um, there being so many of you, so bear with me while I do this. Um, feel free at any point to leave the meeting. You're not you're not obliged to stay. Um, you can either leave your room by pressing the leave button or the end button on your screen. So here you go. I'm going to send you all into small groups. We're in room 10. <laughs> 15, join. That's a good choice. 